Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today I have a little bit of a different video. Um, I'm going to show all of my bad ideas. Because um, recently I've been wanting to make a video, I've been, or you may have noticed I've been putting out fewer videos recently, and the main reason for that is I just haven't been excited about any of the ideas that I've had, I haven't felt like I've had many good ideas. It all sort of started when I launched the Strands product, um, that did pretty well, and I really set the bar high with the trailer video and some of the stuff I made for that I thought um, and I was really excited about that and I had a lot of ideas about what the next thing I should make um, to be a product would be and so I was trying out a bunch of those experimenting trying to make the next cool thing and all of my ideas turned out to not be the greatest ideas um, and simultaneously I was finding it kind of hard to make a video um, about these things that I thought didn't have any merit were kind of boring but then today I had the brilliant idea of making a video about all of my bad ideas because if you get enough bad ideas collected then it becomes a good idea I guess but that's also sort of true in general because when you hit that block and you're not sure what you should make next or you feel like the ideas that you have aren't very exciting you're just kind of lost the enthusiasm for it I think I think one of the best ways to get past that is just to make more things and it, you're still gonna learn a bunch of stuff by doing that and eventually you're gonna hit on some new idea that you hadn't even thought about and that's probably the good idea that you're looking for in the first place so anyway sort of as an explanation for why I haven't been making as many videos it was partly because I was working on other things and partly because I didn't like any of the things I was making I'm gonna go through and show you all of these different things that I was experimenting with and talk about why I didn't like them and some of the problems with different things and then at the end I'll give a sneak preview of this idea which I am excited about so right after making the strands modifier, one of the things, new things I tried with the strands was the gravity modifier that did a physics simulation essentially. So I thought it could be cool to make a library of like particle effect sort of things where you could modularly combine together different modifiers that would add different sort of particle effects to stuff. And so I was experimenting with that. I was experimenting with uh, trying to do collisions, which sort of works, but not really. Um, anyway, I gave up on this because I didn't have a practical use for it really and I saw that they're talking about adding physics nodes in the future to Blender so so I thought it'd be a waste of effort to put too much time into solving this while there was um, a better solution coming in the future but it was an interesting experiment and I think the library of uh, particle system modular pieces is still a good idea and I'm definitely keeping that one on my radar then I had an idea that it would be cool to take some of the modifiers that I have already in my geometry node assets for making trees and to sort of generalize those into a mod more modular system where you could make any sort of plant so you could have like trunks and stems and branching things and things that would add leaves or different sorts of instancing different kind of objects and maybe a tool for making a leaf. So this is a modifier that um, makes a leaf. I forget exactly how it works, but it's super high poly so all of the like veins and things of the leaf itself are modeled and you would bake this to a texture um, so there's weird little hacky things like just instancing a bunch of random stuff around the edge of the leaf to create this fine detail um, interesting idea I think the leaf generator is potentially cool uh, I decided in the end that the variety of plants there are um, there's already tons of plant libraries you can just download assets with plants already made um, so there might not be much interest in that sort of thing and the number of different ways plants can look is so broad that it's hard to generalize it into modular pieces that um, unless you're just going for like a cartoony sort of plant so in the end I decided there'd be too many different things to try to cover with that idea um, even though I experimented with some interesting things and made this leaf generator another modifier that I made while I was considering that plants idea was this one which grows a tree trunk and branches to fill inside of a shape you give it so you you would model this shape of where the canopy of the tree would grow and then this would grow out from from the bottom it would grow towards random points inside of that uh, deformed icosphere in this case um, so that was kind of cool, but again, you need to instance leaves, and um, do you do leaves, or do you do cards with branches, and so for the same reasons I just mentioned, I decided it was too broad of a 
set for there were too many possibilities for a procedural system to work well and there too, it was too finicky to fiddle with the settings uh, it wasn't obvious how you should edit them to get the results you wanted so it's not very friendly to artists and stuff like that um, so another interesting modifier that was definitely cool but um, didn't feel like I could make it into any, anything that I would be happy selling to people. Then this was an idea that I called a mesh texture and essentially what it is is you model a tiling square mesh that's like a texture would be and then you sample it as if it was a texture with like the UV coordinates of another mesh and you can create super detailed things um, for free so you can see this is a super simple um, low poly just cylinder and basic cube and then you choose a mesh texture to put on top of it so it's this one in this case um, and you can change out what it is and it'll s use the UV coordinates to copy that mesh around on the object this is actually a really cool idea I think and I'm definitely gonna figure out something to do with it um, this was a little scene that I, I rendered out of this thing um, some sort of weird spaceship sort of deal um, and part of what I was doing with that was I made some of these by hand making these texture tiles was actually pretty time-consuming um, so then I was working on some tools to make patterns that tiled automatically um, and that has shows some promise so these are all generated texture tiles so Definitely like this idea. Um, I just got to figure out how it fits in. It might fit into what I'm making right now, which is sort of a mechanical based stuff. But yeah, I'm excited to see what I can come up with for that. This was a scene that I made uh, with the Boyd system. After I made the, you may remember, I made a video about a Boyd's geometry node setup that I made for a Boyd's particle system simulation. And after I made that video, I did a bunch of experimenting with that, trying to take that idea further. So I made it so the Boyd's could like follow a curve and group and formations and stuff and where you could control it a bit more um, with animation and stuff. And I added a bunch of different like particle effects and different things and was trying to animate the scene of like flying through. And you can see this is also using those that mesh textures idea to add a bunch of detail. And I'm just trying to make a cool animation. Um, I think there's like explosions and stuff happening. In the end, I never got the renders to look as nice as I wanted it to. You can sort of see it here. It plays back very slowly in real time, but... Like it looked sort of cool, but if you rendered it out full resolution and played it back, you could see it needed a lot more, a lot more attention to detail than what I had, and so I never ended up finishing it because I just didn't have the time to make it look as nice as I wanted it to. Also, I probably would have been more inclined to do it if my computer could handle the scene, but as you can see, it plays back so slow. It was a pain to try to. You had to render it. I had to render it to really see if it was working properly or not and that was just taking too long. Then someone asked about shingles and they were curious if there was a way to place shingles on any sort of roof surface and not just a roof that was generated with my uh, build roof tool. And so I was experimenting with that and while you can get pretty good results for some things, um, getting the shingles to stagger properly was, a, I couldn't solve this problem because if you imagine you have your most basic shingle setup where you have two shingles like this and then you want the shingle underneath to be offset by half of the width of a shingle so that it the middle of the next row overlaps in the middle with the seam of the shingles above it then you need the sort of stair step pattern so you'd think it'd be easy just from your edge right you start the first one at the edge and then the, se the next one you offset by half the width or whatever the problem is that when you got over here and you had these um, slopes on the roof because the way I was doing this was I was creating all of these edges on on the roof so if we come in here so if we come in here and look at this you can see the way it's generated is I place these curves on the surface of the roof running the direction I want the, sh the shingles to be laid out and then I instance along the curve all of the individual shingles which gets you this result. The problem is from the, these curves back here, it's not clear which end is the straight line. 
Or you could even have another situation where you had like another roof over here. Well, then both edges aren't uh, straight or, per or vertical. And so the problem was on the curves over here where they started at this end and went this way, that um, all your offsets get messed up. You don't know which curves in relation to each other are sloping or straight or how to line them up so that they are offset. So I tried a bunch of different things. So this result here is one where I tried to create the points that all of the shingles would be instanced on and then offset the whole row randomly until uh, offsetting it more if the distance was less between points. So if you imagine these two points here would be closer together than if they were properly offset like this. Um, that was the idea, but it didn't really work either, and it creates problems like here. Anyway, it's a difficult problem to solve. It looks really good from a distance, um, but if you get up close. And then at some point, too, I was experimenting with using geometry nodes almost like an image editor for doing different things related to creating textures. And one of the things I made as part of that was something that could create a mesh from a, like a height map or a pattern, something like this that would try to actually create topology that followed the shape more rather than just like decimating a grid and creating a height map. So this was using curves to outline the shape. It only works on certain types of patterns, like basically a black and white texture with no variation. Um, but it did work pretty well for that, um, except it's still sort of high resolution. takes a long time to calculate, has all sorts of problems with intersecting geometry, and I'm not really sure what you'd use it for, so just sort of a random thing I was experimenting with. I don't know what you'd use it for. Then I'd also had an idea that it would be cool to make a set of tools for creating sort of pipes and things like that that would work similarly to the strands modifiers. So I was working on that where you would like draw out a shape of how you wanted these pipe pieces to go. And I was thinking too about um, creating game assets and how would you make this so that there's like a limited number of meshes and then you could place them, like lay them out in a way that made sense and stuff. And so I was experimenting with stuff for that. So this would be, you like create these shapes for the different uh, ways you wanted the pipes to go. So these are just very simple edges. And then it could add like bevels and details and stuff to the pipes and I was experimenting with being able to add like additional elements to them like secondary pipes running in parallel to them um, things like that but uh, that created all sorts of problems because then you couldn't connect them together which was the other part this um, what I call the pipe fitter where it would take a, this collection of I don't know if this is working right now. It looks like it's broken. Well, anyway, I don't know what broke about it exactly, but basically there's a repeat zone in it, and it and what it was doing, it may have broken with the update to 4.2, but it would place pieces along the guide curves trying to connect, um, put run along the edges these pipe pieces that you gave it. So you give it uh, an object with these pieces of pipe in it and then it would find like the start and end points of them and the tangents of the, where the incoming direction was and what the outgoing direction was and it would connect them all together to fit this these edges as closely as possible but that had some problems where um, the corners never quite lined up so the the edge that you drew was a very rough approximation and if you slid it back and forth the, the pipe wouldn't change until you passed like a, a grid point you know or a size of the pipe i also couldn't think of as many ideas to make like a full suite of tools for pipes as i could for the strands so i was having trouble coming up with what all the different visual elements you could add to the pipes would be that would make them interesting and then i was also experimenting with pipe joints because that's obviously an interesting problem to solve because you really want to be able to have your pipes connect together at intersections like this. And that was another big problem. No, the, the pipe fitter thing where it tried to arrange the pipes on the curves couldn't do was it couldn't handle 
intersections um, with more than two edges coming into it. So this was a, an attempt to have that work um, where it would, you have, the, this is just a simple edge and or mesh with edges and you can move the points around and it creates the uh, cylinder around each of the edges and then tries to merge them together. However, it doesn't always work. You can get holes and then if you try to fill the holes with triangles, that doesn't always work either because um, sometimes, where is it? It's right here. Sometimes you get two triangles back to back and that broke how I was trying to calculate which, uh, how to fill the triangles and stuff. So um, it also doesn't work with any, there's certain resolutions it works for. If you get, if you have these too close together, you really have to push the padding back and then the whole thing breaks. Um, like how far, how big the intersection has to be changes. Anyway, it's really finicky. If it's anything is finicky, it's going to be a, a pain to use. It'll be more frustrated. It'll cause more frustration than it solves problems. So that ended up being a bad idea. Then I also just experimented with like, how could you create the perfect topology for a joint? And could you then like deform that in some way? So I was experimenting with that. Um, so this would be like the, a nice topology for a perfect T joint, like a PVC pipe joint. But if you wanted to, um, I don't think it would customize to any angle very well. Um, I'm not sure how I would deform it. Um, I couldn't think of a way that I could just deform that and to fit on the edges. So anyway, that's what that was. But then at some point along the way, I did come up with an idea that I thought was interesting because I was thinking about the pipes and the pipes were cool, but what if you wanted to do other things with it? Um, could you do you know, ladders? Could you make antennas? Could you make gun barrels? Um, could you make bolts and screws? What about all of these different things? So I just started making a bunch of different tools that could make different kinds of details, all based around a tube generally. So this was one of the first ones. I was like, could you make that sort of cheese grater, heat sink, um, protective sort of thing you see around exhausts or could be, um, you know, I don't, whatever that could be. So that was one, I made one to make springs and you can customize a bunch of details about how it bunches and stuff like that. What about gears? Um, so this one makes gears. You can control how many teeth and how deep the teeth are in their shape. And if there's twist or taper, all sorts of things about the gears and these are all made on curves so you can deform them and whatever and then um, this one is called rods and for some reason the normals on this one get messed up if you don't have the bevel I need to inspect that problem a bit more but what it can generally do is just have um, either alternating or telescoping or random variations in the radius of a simple tube. Then this one here makes um, blocks, which are squarish pieces, because those can be useful. This one is just the simple tube. Um, it just does a cylinder. And you can also give it a custom profile, so you can just have a curve or a mesh um, with a shape on it, and you can have it do that. Or you can not give it a custom profile, and it will be a perfect circle. And then I took um, sort of the, what I called the cheese grater idea, and I did one that had slots instead of hole, round holes. And then this one here is sort of a, the diamond grip shape that you can um, see on like handles to certain things or knobs, um, just to, to give it that texture. And then there's another one. I don't think I have a template object for it, but, can, but it can take any sort of object and place it in a radial array around the curve. Um, so if you wanted to put like rivets around, rotating around the outside, you can do stuff like that. And so that was all cool. And all of these you can put, like I said, on curves and you can deform them um, however you want. But I wanted to be able to build a model, a whole bunch of stuff, like actual objects with them rather than just have it be something you put on a curve. So all the modifiers I just went through were used on curves to create one object that used that 
pattern, if you will. What you can also do, however, is have a mesh that's just a series of edges like this. Um, and you can add the modifiers to the mesh instead of to a curve. And if you add them to a mesh, they stack. Or I'm, I'm calling it stack for now. I don't know if I like that name or not. But the idea is you apply these modifiers in a stack and which modifier is used by each edge in the mesh is controlled by attributes. So there'll be an add-on that comes with this as well. And if you go to the item tab in the properties, you can see all of your stackable modifiers here when you select an edge. And you can select which modifiers are applied to that edge. So we could turn the spring on or off for this edge, or the tube on or off for that edge. You can choose which materials assigned to each edge. Um, and then you can also, I added an operator to scale the radius of the edge because meshes by default don't have a radius like a curve does. But um, you can, if you set up your hotkeys for that, you can make it be Alt S just like it is for curves or something, anything you want. But it works just like scaling the radius on a curve. Essentially, you can control the radius of the edge. And all of this is just using attributes. So there's a modifier radius, a modifier index for which modifiers should be applied and then a modifier material um, which maps to the material the actual materials on the object so one zero would be red one would be green and two would be blue but um, you can also just select it from this add-on here so what that allows you to do is to model complex things you, you can set up these modifiers so this one has you know different tools for creating gear shapes and tube shapes and spring shapes and whatever and then you can just go into your mesh and you can copy edges and reassign them you can change their length or their radius um, and you can make all sorts of interesting things generally cylindric of some kind but um, you can also make this was a I've been experimenting, trying to test it out and see how it works and trying to actually make some stuff. So this was like a turret I made. All of the parts that are metal looking were made with um, these stack tools. So you can see this one here, it's a little more complex. I have things going in all sorts of different directions. Um, so these pieces here are just cylinders. And this is a, the rods deal with the different radiuses. And all of these, again, you can scale and stuff. Um, to make this sort of turret looking thing. These tubes were made with it. Um, and then here I made a deal where some sort of a steam generator, some sort of a hub for pipes to come out of. So this actually works better, I think. It's more flexible if all you want to do is just render a scene than the pipes things I was showing earlier that didn't quite work out the way I had one of them too because um, this is just simple tubes and stuff and you can customize where they go and place them pretty easily and then if you wanted to come in here and select and then if you wanted to come in here and just select this edge and make it instead of the rods the tube you could do that or you could make it square with the block deal or you can make it a gear um, you might have to change the resolution so it had enough points in it, but. So anyway, that's the cool new tool that I've been working on. Um, I'm excited about it. I think it's really flexible and allows you to do some pretty powerful stuff. Um, I'd be curious to know what your all thoughts on it were. Um, and if you have any ideas for additional sorts of tube-like things I should add as way, the meshes you can generate with it. Um, I'd be curious to know what if you have any ideas for what that could be. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think, um, and hopefully that was an interesting look at all of the bad ideas that led to something that I'm excited about. So, But yeah, let me know what you think, either in the comments or you can join my Discord server. There's a link to that in the description. Um, for more information about me, check, my, check out my website. That's also in the description. And yeah, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.